Imagine bringing a crowd of robots to life. In this video, I will guide you on how to create an epic robot army formation. By the end, you'll be able to create your own stunning robot crowd scenes. Hi, I'm Alejandro Perez, the CGI Nerd. I have over 20 years experience in the entertainment industry, working on blockbuster movies, AAA games, and even a Super Bowl commercial. I've served as a character technical director, motion capture analyst, crowd simulation lead, and as a tenure track professor at RIT. Today, I am here to help you unlock your creative potential. Let's get started. Okay, to start off, we're gonna create a geometry node and let's name it Crowd Formation. Inside of this geometry node, let's create a FBX character import node. Then let's save our project. And now we can go back to that FBX character import node and access the character file that we wanna use for this project. The FBX character import node has three outputs. The first one is for your geometry. The second one is for your capture pose. And the last one is for any animation that would be associated with this character. This FBX file doesn't have any textures associated with it, but if it did, it would automatically pop up when you look at the geometry output. In my case here, I have to go in and create a material node then jump over to my material editor, create a principled shader, go to my textures, and assign the texture color file that I want for the character. This is as far as I'll go for this example right here because I just wanna focus on the simulation on this video, but um, I will later spend some more time and fill in all the other textures that are associated with this character. So let's go back to our object level, then jump into the crowd's geometry node and back to the material node that we created. And let's assign that new material that I just created for the robot. And then just to keep the scene clean, let's name this node robot shader. Now let's create an agent from rig node and we'll connect this to the FBX character import node. This agent from rig node will be used to house all of the information for our individual agents for our crowd simulation. Now let's create a agent layer node. The agent layer node is how we can define the way the agent looks. So the agent from rig is going to be controlling like how it moves and identifying the agent, whereas the agent layer are ways to be able to control the way the agent looks. The agent layer needs three inputs. First one is going to be our agent. The second one is going to be our geometry. And the third one is going to be our capture pose. Now that we've done this, if we visualize the agent layer node, you'll notice that our texture that we spent time trying to connect is gone. So that was part of the reason I wanted to show you connecting the material, just to show you that once you get to this point, it's, you're gonna lose the uh, materials that are assigned to it, that is normal, don't worry about it. But just for an example, if we take this agent unpack node and unpack our agent, you'll see that we can get the textures back. So the data is there, it's just not visible, but in the end, we're actually going to assign the textures a different way. So let's delete the unpack agent node and then we're going to go up and create a new pane. And we're going to go to inspectors and data tree. In this drop down menu, we're going to select material style sheets. Expand the OBJ level, then go to the geometry node crowd formation, expand that, right click, and then go to add style sheet parameter. Now expand that, right click and add a new style then right click and create add override. We're gonna change the setting to set material. Then we're gonna to have to expand our pane a little bit and then go to override value. And in there we're going to select and assign the material that we created earlier. So that gives us the material that we wanna access but we haven't told it what we're going to assign it to. So under style, right click on it and then click add target and then we're going to set it to primitive. In this case, that's going to be okay because we're only gonna have our agents in that node 
uh, but if there were other things in there, it would assign it to everything that is inside of that geometry node. Uh, you could add subtargets if you wanted to get more specific though. Now let's jump back to our geometry node. And now that we're here, let's create an agent clip node. This agent clip node will allow us to be able to bring in animations. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use an FBX animation. So let's switch the input type to FBX. And then I'm going to give it a name. In this case, it's going to be idle. And then I want to go to the file and select the animation that I have saved out for our idle animation in the FBX format. Now let's double check that this is working. We can go up to the clip preview section. Let's check on this first input and then select our idle animation. And then we'll check on the second input and we should get a play black. And if the animation is playing too fast, make sure that you switch over to real time um, inside of your timeline on the bottom. You can use multiple animations if you'd like. In this case, I'm only going to use the one. It is 150 frames long, so it's several seconds long. And um, I can get some variety by offsetting when the animation starts for each agent. Now let's create a crowd source and connect that to the agent clip. And then let's switch over to the formation type. So that way it lays it out as a formation. And then now you're going to notice that if we render, we're going to have a little bit of clipping and issues. The reason for this is that the agent's bounding box is based off of the skeletal mesh for the agent rig and not the actual geometry. So if we want to expand the bounding box, we have to go through and set up a way to be able to expand that and it knows where there is more geometry. So the way that we're going to achieve this is with an agent collision layer. And with the agent collision layer, we're going to actually create collision geometry that is attached to the agent skeleton. And um, in the future, this would actually be really helpful to be able to do ragdoll simulations and things like that. But it also helps us by expanding the bounding box of our character to be able to get the whole agent when we render. Before we start adjusting the agent collision layer, let's go to our agent layer and turn off the animation clip that we were using. That way we can be in a default eight pose that will make it easier to just gauge the size and the direction of our collision boxes that we're going to be creating. Now, if you look carefully, you'll see little dots on your character. These dots are actually the um, points for your character's joints, the skeleton. So if you click on one of them, you'll see that you'll have a control handle that you can manipulate and adjust the size for each collision uh, container box that we're going to be working with. And also, if you hold shift, you can expand it, um, symmetrically in the direction that you're pulling. So that should save you a little bit of time as well. At this point, we just go through and repeat this for every single joint on the body. And then we can continue on from there because then the um, bounding box will be expanded to cover the whole character. So I'm going to do that off screen and let's jump straight into the next step here. This is what the character looks like when it's all finished with its collision layers created. And now let's jump back to our crowdsource node. Now, if I push play, you'll see that all of the characters are moving and animating with that default idle animation that we created. But the problem is, is that they're all moving at exactly the same time. So let's go over to the randomize tab. And then let's check on randomize clip time and we'll see the settings where we can start playing around with how much offset we want for each animation for each agent. If we play it now, you'll see that there is some variation. So now if we look at the, the settings for here, it is randomizing up to half a second between 
each agent. So um, there's about half a second variation in the start time for all of these. But because my clip is much longer, I can actually increase this. So this setting is in seconds, so I'll have to calculate how many frames I have 150 and then calculate it out how many um, seconds that would be and then add a randomization for that range and then I'll have a much wider range that I can actually use for my randomization for the agent's animation. So just to keep things easy and not needing to do all of the math, I'll just put it at five seconds because it's kind of in between seconds right now between five and six um, and then uh, we can see when we play back that we have a much diverse set of animations. At least it looks like it. It's all using the same animation, but they're starting at very different parts, so we don't see as much overlap. If we did, we can actually adjust the seed value, and then it will randomize it with a seed value, so that way you can get a new variation as well. Cool, so we have a basic formation now, and if we wanted to, we can create multiple um, crowd sources and then have different sizes of crowd formations based off of each crowd source. But if you look at the crowd source, there's actually a second input that you can use, and that input takes points that we can create a custom formation from or any type of scattering if you wanted to. It basically will assign an agent to each point on our um, graph. So what I'm going to do is create an add node and add a single point. And now you'll see that we have a single agent in the scene because I have a single point connected into that second input. Now we can use any methods we want to create more points. Um, here, as an example, I'm just going to use a copy and transform. Then I can set an offset and a number of agents that I want to create so that we create an evenly spaced agent number of agents within a single line. Now, if I use another copy and transform and offset it in a different axis, you'll see that we can actually create a grid which is just like the formation that we had before. A cool little trick that we can do is add a match size before it goes into the um, crowdsource. And when we do that, it will actually center it on the origin for our crowd formation, which is kind of nice. So that way we can have um, our create it however we want to create it and then center it if that was what we needed. In this case, I think that is appropriate for what I'm doing. Okay, so now if we go through and just repeat this a few times and adjust some of the settings to be a little bit different, we can get a nice, big, fancy looking formation that is not just a default grid, but we can create a more complex uh, formation for our robot agents. So great job on creating your robot army formation. Want to learn more? Check out this video on creating advanced material style sheets for your crowd agents.